uh, the addictive inverse of minus 20 minus 23 is positive 23 right yes okay uh, now may i ask what is the multiplicative inverse inverse of minus 23 Do you know what's multiplicative inverse? No. No? Multiplicative inverse? Okay. So if, if I'm talking about additive inverse, you said that uh, this is 23 and the additive inverse of 23 is going to be minus 23. Right? Why? Yeah. Because additive inverse of something means that if you say 23 and then you say plus, something is equal to zero. Okay. 23 plus what will give you zero or what you can say is you can say it uh, like this also you can say what is 23 plus um, zero equal to but when you say 23 plus zero equal to 23 that means zero is the additive identity okay identity why are we saying identity because identity means that it is something that when you add it to 23 when you add it to 23 you will get 23 itself right so 23 you have 23 and you're getting 23 so zero is the additive identity of 23 so it's like it's kind of like a mirror you know when you're standing in front of a mirror what do you see you see yourself right so that's what that's what the zero is doing over here it's acting like a an identity like a mirror over there so that's why we call it additive identity now can you tell me what is multiplicative identity and by that i mean if you have a number let's say 23 and you multiply this identity multiplicative identity One. to it yes exactly it is a multiplicative mirror basically okay so this is the concept of identity now just the opposite of that is the concept of inverse okay Additive inverse and multiplicative inverse. When we say inverse, you can say it's kind of like saying it's the opposite. Okay. So what is the additive opposite of 23? As uh, you said, it's minus 23. Minus 23. Now, can you tell me what will be the multiplicative inverse of 23? 23 multiplied by something will give you the multiplicative identity. Will give you one. So what is that something going to be? One. 23 multiplied by something will give you one. Think, think. 23. If you multiply 23 with 23, what will you get? Okay, let's let's take with the, let's start with the, <coughs> I'm sorry, with an easier question. Uh, how about how about four? Okay, four multiplied by something will give you one. So if you multiply four with let's let's start with zero. If you multiply four with zero, what will you get? Zero. Zero. Right. If you multiply four with zero, you get zero. So it can't be zero. Then what else? One. If you multiply four with one, what do you get? Four. Yeah, you get four right so it can't be one then you said four what if we multiply it with four what will we get hmm? i can't hear you yes it will get 16 so it can't even be this think okay uh keba <clears throat> think of it like this if I say, okay, just a minute, I'm just going to lower the fan. I'm not feeling well. Just a minute, okay? <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, Heba, yeah. So, I was saying that... Uh, to, in order to understand this, let's do a small mental exercise. Let's say you want to uh, know if you if you if you want to know two plus what will give you let's say three. Two plus what will give you three? Then what do you do for finding that out? Two plus what 
will give you three. One. How do you know this? Because two plus one is three. Okay. How about I give you a big number? Like if I give you two zero zero seven eight nine plus what will give you? Uh, I don't even have space over here. Wait. Yeah, will give you three eight five six nine three oh nine whatever something something. Yeah. Then how will you tell me? What? How will you find it? Acha Hiba, I have a small question for you. Um, can we have our class for like so? Usually, our class duration is for one hour, right? Can we have it for two hours today? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because but, on Monday. But. But, huh. but I yeah. have an exam to like. You have an exam tomorrow. Which one? Uh, not not tomorrow. Like on Sunday, English. English, okay. Do you find English an easy subject or difficult? Hmm. Easy. Easy. So, can you give one extra hour today to math? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Because I, I'm saying this because Hiba on Monday I'll be traveling, so I won't be able to take a uh, class during this time. Okay. Because um. You know, when you're traveling, the there's a lot of network network fluctuations, so I won't be able to. Um, so I was thinking, since today the other student is isn't gonna come, so we can have an extra class, right? Okay. Um, yeah. So, what what are you gonna do in this case? Uh, I multiply them. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> multiply what? What will you multiply? Two zero zero seven eight nine and With this number eight, and eight, five, this number. Six, eight, okay. So you yeah. will multiply this number. Let's let this is a huge number. I'm just going to call it A. Okay. And this number I'm going to call it B. So you're going to multiply A and B. So if you multiply that, you will get this. You will get the question mark. Yeah. Okay. Hiba, tell me over here. This is the exact same thing, right? This statement and this statement is the exact same thing. Like we're not really doing anything different. The only difference is the value. Like over here you have two, and over here you have three. Over here, in this uh, in this statement, you just have bigger numbers. That's all. Um. So, over here, if you do the same thing, what you are telling me to do in this case, that if I take if I take two and I multiply it with three, am I supposed to get this number over here? Will I? No, right? Because two multiplied by three is um, six. Hmm. What if you like subtract three and two? Yes. Now you're getting it. Mashallah. So smart. So you multi you subtract it. You say three minus two, right? You know what happens here? So, uh, Hiba, this isn't exactly a part of your syllabus, but I'm just telling you because. Because I think this this is like an essence. This it's the essence of math, and how can you not know this? So that's why I just want to teach you this. See, Hiba, you have a balance. Have you ever seen a weight balance, a weighing balance? You know, you have um, it's called a pan balance actually. Um, like you have, like here in India, we have a uh, sabzi walas. They have this kind of stuff. So they have a pan over here, okay, and then they have another pan over here. And then it rests like this, <clears throat> or sometimes you have it, you have the balance like this. There's something hanging from this pan, and then you have this pan. Okay, 
Oops, sorry. So, <clears throat> wait a minute. And, and the one with more weight is lifted down. Yeah. Okay, so what happens is, what happens is, uh, if you put something on one side, so let's say if you put, whenever you're uh, weighing vegetables, what do they do when they're weighing vegetables? Let's say you tell the, you, you tell the sabzi wala uncle that I want two kgs of potatoes. So what does he do? <clears throat> hmm? Aku, you have not seen it. Okay. So what he does is, he puts um he puts a two kgs uh they, they have a block a measuring block okay it, this one it this this block it weighs two kilos okay it says two kilos over here and he puts it on this on this pan okay on the other pan he puts the potatoes the pol the uh, polythene of the potatoes and whichever is heavy like uh, if the two kg is heavy like if the potatoes are less than two kgs, it, it will, you know, go up and this one will be down, right? So we know that this one is heavier, okay? But if the potatoes are more than two kgs, then the potatoes wala pan will be down, okay? It, it will be, uh, it will be coming down because of its weight. But if they are both equal, then it balances perfectly. So that is what happens in a mathematical, this is called an equation, okay? When you have an equal to sign over here, it's called an equation. So what happens is, let's say I tell you, uh, I have over here, I'm just going to open a new page. I have, let's say 5 plus 2 equals 7. Is that is that okay? Hmm. So 5 plus 2 equals 7. Um, so they are, they are equal. The left-hand side of the equation, the value of the left-hand side, that is also equal to 7. And the right hand side is also equal to seven. Let me just replace that with something else. <coughs> Let's say this is equal to three plus four. Both of these are equal, right? So they are both balanced. All right. They are both balanced. They are the same level. Now, if I, what, what I do is in a pan balance, let us go back to the pan balance. In the pan balance, now, if I add one more, if I, like, the, the sabziwala has measured the two kgs of potato, okay. Now, I change my mind and I tell him, no, 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 wait, I don't want two kg, I want three kg now. So, well, you know what he'll do? He'll add one more block of uh, weight. It will be labeled as one kg, okay. He will add it. He will put it on this pan. And over here, he'll add one kg of potatoes. Okay, so are you seeing what he's doing? If you are adding something on the left pan, you also have to add an equal value on the right pan also so that it remains balanced. Otherwise, the balance will be disturbed. So that is the same thing that we do in the case of equations also. So if I want to add a 1 over here, then I have to add a 1 on the right side also. So now what does the overall value of my new equation become? What is the value of the left hand side? Eight. <laughs> Sorry. Eight, yes. And the right hand side also? Eight. Eight. Okay. So this, this concept is useful when we are trying to figure out the value of a missing number. Like in our case, it was two plus what equals three. So let me give you um, a little bigger, uh, a few bigger numbers. Uh, let's say we have 15. Okay, I'm telling you that that there is, I have 15 plus what will give you, let's say 27. Okay, so just like over here, you knew that 2 plus 1 equals 3. So you quickly said it because it was there in your mind. It is something that you have experienced so much that you, you instantly know that, okay, if there's 2 plus, there's a blank and then there's 3, then it must be 1, right? Because we have done this. Uh, we are very familiar with smaller numbers. But when it comes to a little bigger numbers, we have to think a little bit. 
what do we do in this case we say that okay what i want to do is i want to find the value of the question mark right yeah okay so, so we can stack the we can subtract 27 and 15 yeah so what i do is i i have this question mark with me i subtract i want this question mark to be alone on the left hand side so that i can find out its value uh, properly okay so i have to subtract this i have to just subtract this i want to take away this 15 i want to say no please leave my question mark alone so that i can know what its value is so in order to do that i need to sub <coughs> subtract this 15 so if you subtract 15 if you subtract 15 from the left hand side you need to subtract it from the right hand side as well right that's what we've done over here like you can't just subtract something from one part of the equation and not from the other you have to do it on both the parts so okay so this 15 minus 15 gives you what zero right so zero plus this question mark equals 27 minus 15 what is that Uh, um, yes, it is twelve. Okay, so the value of my question mark that is equal to twelve. So what happens is you just fit twelve into this this part, and it will be the equation will be satisfied. <clears throat> okay, so why I told you all this was okay. <coughs> I'm sorry. So just take a look at this thing. That's where we started. so that was what you did you subtracted from both sides in the case of when it was addition right it is plus 2 so you had to do minus 2 but over here in this case it is 4 is being multiplied 4 is being multiplied with this mysterious box okay 1 divided so by 4 yes exactly so over here my question mark that is going to be 1 divided by 4 So, what will you put in uh, inside this box? One divided by four. Why? Because that that's what your question mark was, right? Yeah. Okay. So, did you understand what is the? This is known as the as the uh, multiplicative inverse. Multiplicative. Why is it inverse? Because when you are multiplying it with this, it is giving you the identity, the multiplicative identity. Okay. So, understood? Yeah. Okay, so hmm. any more doubts? No. Okay. <coughs> um. So Hiba, um, any other doubts in this worksheet, the second worksheet? No, but uh, actually, like uh, my my school like. Uh, send this worksheet for like the revision and uh, i can't understand this question okay uh, tell dash me dash divided dash divided by 32 gives zero okay <coughs> okay hiba um let's start thinking about it that you have something something divided by 32 that will give you zero okay heba tell me if i have um if i write um let's say i have <clears throat> 12 okay i have 12 over here and i say 12 divided by 4 gives me 3 right so for one moment just pay attention to these two numbers what is the multiply what happens when you multiply these two numbers uh, we will get 12 right we will get 12 so when you multiply these two numbers you get this number are you getting it so the, so the answer will be zero yes very good The answer will be zero, right? So, what do you need to see? 
you need to see oh what will happen when i when i multiply these two are you able to see the screen yeah are you able to see what's written on the top yeah okay so you you got it yeah okay any more questions yeah by more okay a uh, which uh, which of the following pairs of integers gives a sum of minus 5 the answer will be minus 10 and sorry minus 10 and minus 5 right minus 10 and minus 5 see just what happens when you add minus 10 and minus 5 what will you get minus 10 minus 5 hmm minus 10 minus 5 yeah. then what will this be minus 15 minus 15 but that's not what we are looking for so this is not going to be the right option so minus 2 and minus 3 minus 2 and minus 3 and you're supposed to add them because it said sum so yeah. what will you get minus 2 minus 3 and that will be, be minus 5 yes theek hai so this one is the right option okay hmm yes heba any other questions no <clears throat> no more questions any other questions from the worksheet that i sent yes yeah, the the first question the from our worksheet to first question just a minute hmm any other questions eba uh yeah from worksheet 2 first question 2 just a minute i am not this this wait of this give me one minute i okay yeah yeah <clears throat> continue worksheet <coughs> man travels 30 km east of a place a and reached b from b he traveled 60 km west of b and reached c Uh, hmm. find the distance of c and uh, c from a hmm okay did you solve it did you try to solve it yeah hmm tell me i added 30 and 60 okay first the first thing you need to do is draw a diagram when it uh, comes to such questions okay um so there's a place a he traveled east of a this is a he traveled 30 kilometers east and reached b you know these type of questions you get it in competitive exams also have you ever seen them no, no? well uh, you know when you have certain uh, competitive exams entrance exams they have these type of questions that come under uh, reasoning and mathematical ability anyway so from b he traveled 60 kilometers west so we know that this is my east so it's like east is this way and west is this way right and then he traveled 60 kilometers west of b and reached c so tell me which place will he reach will it be towards uh here will it be in the yellow portion will it be in the orange portion uh the the place c okay or will it be in the green portion can you explain the question once again c so a man he traveled so he started from a place a okay 
he he traveled thirty kilometers east, east. Okay, so if if we are taking uh, in this convention that uh, this convention, okay, that north is up, south is down. Not up actually, like in front of you. South is behind you. Then east is going to be to your right, and west is going to be your left, right? Yeah. So that's what they are saying. That this this person, he was standing over here at A. He traveled thirty kilometers. Now we will ask, okay, he traveled thirty kilometers, but which direction did he travel? Did he travel? To the right or to the left or you know um, in front or east. back. Yes, he traveled east. Okay, so we're taking east as the right direction. So he traveled in this direction, and he reached a place B. Okay, and how far is B from A? Thirty kilometers. Thirty kilometers from B. He traveled sixty kilometers west of B. So which place? Is west of B. Now tell me which place is west of B. Which color code is it? Yellow, orange, or green? Okay. Behind that, uh, before that, first tell me, west of B will be to the right of B or to the left of B? West of B. West. West will be. They are saying. He traveled sixty kilometers to the west of B. So he he started off from here first of all. Then he traveled and then he reached here. Okay. Yeah. From here he is traveling sixty kilometers west. So does he go to the right of B or to the left of B? Ah, uh, left. Yes, left of B. So. So left of B, we have two portions. Now, first tell me, uh, how many kilometers has he traveled west of B? Sixty. Sixty. So that sixty kilometers is going to be where? So you see that he travels to the left of B. So he keeps moving like this. Then thirty kilometers means he reached over here, right? So further he will travel how many kilometers? How many more kilometers? Yes, thirty. Right. So where will he reach? He will be in the orange portion or the yellow portion? Ah, uh, yellow. Yes. So he will be somewhere over here. Now they are saying find. So he reached a place called C. They are saying find the distance of C from A. You have to find the distance of C from A. And they are already telling you that. The distance of C from B this much is sixty kilometers. So now you have to find this thing from C to A. You have to find this sixty minus thirty. Yeah, exactly. It will be sixty minus thirty, and that will be. 30. Thirty. Very good. What was your doubt in this? Uh, I don't. Know. I <laughs> it just it just looked like it just looked hard. Yeah, it looked confusing. It looked like oh, I can't do this. But when you um think about it step by step, see any question. Just remember this, Eva. <clears throat> no question will ever be given to you that you won't understand or that is not your level okay if you're not understanding what a particular word in a question means you can always ask your invigilator or the teacher who is present okay but the question in itself will not have something that you can't think about so it's all just about thinking all the information is already there in the question you just have to put it put it all out in the on the notebook in the form of a diagram Or in whatever way you can, you want to think about it. So yeah, any other questions? Uh, the fifth question. Okay, the Same fifth question. Question. Uh, okay, yeah. just a minute. <clears throat> 
Mm, okay, the cement company, that question? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. <coughs> so, did you try it? Uh, no, I, I tried to understand it, but I couldn't understand it. Okay, you couldn't understand the question. No problem. Let's do it together. I'm just look it up. See. So they are saying that there's a cement company. It earns a profit of rupees eight per bag of white cement sold and <clears throat> a loss of rupees five per bag per bag of gray cement sold. Okay, the company sells 3000 bags of white cement and 5000 bags of gray cement in a month. What is its profit or loss? So, Hiba, do you remember the first worksheet that we did um, when I asked you what is the opposite of profit of rupees 800? Yeah. What did you say? Loss of rupees 800. Okay. So, that means whenever we have two opposites, we can always uh do you think we can always denote them in terms of opposite numbers like can i say so if i have profit versus loss they are two opposite things so can i say profit of rupees 800 that means let's say i am i'm running a business i earned a profit so can i say i got positive 800 rupees and let's say if i incurred a loss can i say that i got negative 800 rupees Yeah, like Hiba, for example, let's say you opened a bank account and so this is the account and you deposited some money in it. So I'm saying that the money that the bank has now, so when you deposit, that means let's say you deposited 2000 rupees. So I'm saying that's plus 2000, right? And when you withdrew uh, let's say 200 rupees then I'm saying you the bank now has minus 200 rupees so how much does your bank account totally have now what is 2000 minus um, 200 Hmm. What's it? One thousand eight hundred. Yes, eighteen hundred, right? So basically, why why I gave you this example was to uh, help you understand <clears throat> how we can talk about day to day transactions or day to day opposite things, if you like, in terms of negative and positive, right? We can say plus and minus. So. Um, yeah, I mean, even, even in, in, in the concept of when we're talking about the concept of the hereafter, even there, we have the concept of plus and minus, right? You have good deeds. So plus good deeds, like plus is added to your account. Positive is added to your account. If you have bad deeds, then, you know, that gets subtracted from your account. So that comes in then, you know, it's a negative thing, like positive and negative. Yeah. You have both. So, so that's like. Uh, that's one more example of when you have two opposite things, you can represent them as one is positive, one is negative. So that helps in, uh, you know, calculating. That's, wh that's why we use integers. Uh, that's why we talk about negative numbers. So yeah, let's move to this question. Where this question is saying that this, he earns a profit of rupees eight per bag of white cement. So let's say this is my white cement. Okay, this is one bag of white cement and for one bag, he earns a profit. What, the, what that means is, what do you understand by profit, Heba? Um, like uh, they get the money. Yeah, so um, 
okay what all i have told you till now what all we have discussed and we have seen about positive and negative profit is positive loss is negative can you now explain this question to me in your own words uh yeah hmm. so like uh, the cement the cement company is like uh, earning the profit of uh, rupees 8 uh, uh, after like uh, the white cement is sold and uh, mm. and like the loss of rupees 5 per gray cement is so hmm okay then what does the a part of the question ask you what is the, the a part the company selling the company the company selling 3000 bags cement 5000 bags of gray cement a month so we have to find the profit and loss you have to find yeah. whether it is profit i have a question yeah so they're asking if it's profit or loss hmm. do, do we have to find one of them see uh let me try to explain it to you like this Oh. Ah, uh, can understand. you hear me? You understood. What did you understand? Tell me. Like, if the company is selling ah uh, three thousand bags of white cement and like five thousand bag of grey cement, and since they're se selling three thousand bags of white cement, so they're getting um. I don't know how to explain it. No, no, you're almost there. I'm, I'm really eagerly listening. Yeah, tell, tell, tell. It's okay, even if you're using broken language, it's totally fine. I'm just interested in listening to your explanation. Yeah. Uh, so since they're selling three thousand bags of white cement, they're going to get rupees, uh, eight, uh, per bag. Mm hmm. So that's going to be like eight multiplied three thousand. Very good, excellent. See, you got it. Yeah. Huh. So okay. So let's say this is my white cement. Okay. This is this is one bag of white cement, and like that, I have so many bags. Okay, I have multiple bags of white cement. A lot of bags. I'm not gonna draw all of them. So rupees eight per bag. Rupees eight per bag. Multiplied by. Ah, uh, three thousand. Three thousand bag. right then you have what that's gray cement okay i don't have a gray color here okay so um that's my gray cement okay wait so this this uh, rupees 8 per bag that's positive or negative positive positive and then the uh, the rupees 5 per bag that loss of rupees 5 per bag that's going to be minus positive or negative five. minus 5 so can you tell me how should i write this minus 5 multiplied 5000 yes because there's 5000 bags oops i wrote these by mistake so like 5000 bags <clears throat> okay so let's calculate both of them separately so let's say let's ask what what is the total profit that he is getting <coughs> the the company is getting minus hmm. minus 2 ta minus minus or plus because minus. it's a profit profit oh, sorry a positive 2400 24 and how many zeros 3 Twenty four thousand. That's positive. Okay, that's the profit. I have able to see because I think I have used a very light color. Yeah, I can. You can see. Okay. So. But I have a confusion. Yes. Since it's like positive eight and uh, nothing, nothing. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. Okay. Great. Very good. Really proud of you. Yeah, so this this thing, the negative, uh, the purple part, the gray cement. Let's calculate that. 
that will be two five and three zeros minus two five and three zeros. Yes. Three zero. So, what is the total? Uh, what is his total net earning? We call it the net earning. What is his net earning? We have to add them. Yeah, right. So there, he is having profit also. He is having loss also. So we are going to. What are we going to? What should I write here? Minus positive twenty four. Hmm. Zero zero and plus minus twenty five zero. Sorry, Very yes. Good. It will be minus twenty five thousand, right? Because this is negative twenty five thousand. Get it? Yeah, it's yeah. going to be a minus forty nine thousand. Okay, think again. What is this? Twenty four thousand. Plus or minus? Plus. And what is this? Minus. Okay, so this is basically my twenty four thousand minus, minus twenty five thousand. So what should I write? A one thousand. Positive or negative? Positive. Positive. Pakka. Which number is oh, bigger? Sorry, uh, minus one thousand twenty five thousand. Minus one thousand. Net earning is minus one thousand. So that what does that translate to? This means loss of one thousand, right? Yeah, because it's um, negative. Negative, exactly. And uh, this is the same thing that we had done uh, when we were talking about above sea level and below sea level. Right, we said that the negative sign denotes below sea level. Over here, the negative sign, what does it denote? Loss. Loss. Very good. Okay. So, okay. Now look at the B part of the question. That is the interesting part of the question. Okay. <clears throat> Can you explain that to me or try to understand it? And let's discuss how we can uh, come to a strategy on how to solve okay. this. I didn't understand. You didn't understand? Okay. They're saying, what is the number of white cement bags that company must sell to have neither profit nor loss if the number of gray bags sold is 6,400 bags? Now, what this means is <coughs> you have your, this is your white cement bag. Right, this is your white cement bag. White yeah. cement bag will give you profit or loss? A uh, profit. Profit. And gray cement bag will give you profit or loss? Loss. Gray cement bag will give you loss. Now, are you seeing that what they did here, what this company did, was that it sold three thousand bags that was giving it profit, and five thousand bags. That was giving it loss. So now the overall loss, the overall earning that they had, they ended up having a loss of one thousand rupees, and that's very sad, right? They, they, you shouldn't have, you shouldn't have a loss, right? In any, any business doesn't want to have a loss. They want to have profit. profit. I'm sorry. <clears throat> so, what this question is asking is. How many white cement bags should they sold? Should should they sell? Just a minute. How many white cement bags should they sell? So they are telling you that the company is going to sell sixty four hundred gray bags. 
I think I understood like uh, the first sentence. Yeah, tell me. So they're asking uh, to find how many uh, white cement bags they have to sell to have uh, neither profit or loss. Okay, when it says neither profit nor loss, that means your net earning should be the uh, the same. The Again. same. Okay, wait a minute. See here, they are saying neither profit nor loss. What does profit mean in in terms of mathematical signs? What does it mean? Profit. It is positive. positive. And what does loss mean? Negative. Negative. They are the saying, zero? yes, very good. So net earning should be zero. Okay. They are saying yeah. that they are planning to sell 6,400 bags of gray cement. Okay. That means that is going to give you some loss, right? We're going to calculate how much loss that is going to give us. They are saying that I'm going to get some loss if I sell 6,400 gray bags, right? I'm going to get loss. I'm going to have some loss because it's a gray bag and it's going to give me loss of rupees five per bag. So they are saying you're going to get some loss. How many, how many white bags should I sell so that the profit that I get from the white cement bags that will compensate for my loss and overall I will have a uh, you know, a total of zero. It will be neither profit nor loss. So how many white cement bags should I sell such that it can compensate for my loss? So what should we, did you understand the question now? Yeah. Okay. So now, um, can you tell me what to do? Multiply it by zero. Hmm. Multiply it by zero. Multiply what by zero? 6,400. Uh, 6, and why are we multiplying it with zero? Zero is what? Zero is the net earning. Net earning, right? Okay. Tell me, how do we calculate the net earning? How did we calculate it over here? Uh, the profit and loss. We have to add them. Yes. Just a minute. <clears throat> so what you did was you added your profit and loss. So your net earning will be calculated by adding the profit and the and loss. loss. It won't be, it won't be uh, calculated by you know, you, you it won't be calculated by multi, uh, multiplying it with this, right? Yeah. Okay, see, you know the net earning. What does the net earning have to be? In this That's case, zero. zero, very good, very good. So the net earning has to be zero. You don't know the profit. You have to calculate the profit, right? You don't know the profit. So you will say, okay, I don't know the profit. Uh, so I don't know the profit. And then plus loss. Do you know how much loss they are going to get? 1,000. 1,000? How many gray bags are they selling? Uh, 6,400. 6,400 gray bags they are selling. And how much loss are they getting per gray bag? 25,000 per gray bag per bag per 1, bag 000? how much loss no how much loss per bag 35 five. yes so <clears throat> rupees 5 ka loss they are getting per bag and they are selling how many bags 6400 so what is the total loss that they are getting Six, six, uh, 6400 multiplied by 5. Yes. So how much will that be? Let's calculate.
Okay, so what should I write over here in this blank? Uh, in this blank, thirty-two thousand plus or minus? Minus two thousand. Minus because it's a net earning and loss means no loss will give me a negative earning, right? So minus thirty-two thousand. Okay. So now, can you tell me how much should my profit be? So that my overall is zero. How much of positive should I get so that the the negative that I'm getting? See, the negative that I'm getting is thirty two thousand. ठीक है? I'm having zero. negative thirty two thousand. No, no, no. Listen again. Hear, hear carefully. Okay. The I am having. A negative of thirty two thousand. So how much positive should I have so that the overall is zero? Positive thirty two thousand. Yes, very good. That is basically that's called the what additive inverse, additive right? Inverse. Yes, very good. So the profit should be positive thirty two thousand. Okay, so we know that the Profit should be positive thirty two thousand, but that's not what we have to find. They are saying, "What is the number of white cement bags that we need to sell?" Can you find that out somehow? Wait, you know, I can stop working now. Okay, can you find that out somehow? That you know the profit and see the formula that we came up with was this: you have bag. Okay. Then, uh, sorry, number of bag. You multiply it with the uh, amount of earning per bag, right? Whether it is profit or loss, right? That's what we are doing, right? Over here also, see, sixty four hundred. The number of bags. Um, just a minute. This is the number of bags. And the earning per bag that is negative, the loss per bag over here is rupees five. So earning per bag, we are multiplying that with each other. Then we are getting what are we getting after multiplying them? Uh, thirty-two thousand. Yes, very good. We should get rupees thirty-two thousand. So, acha. You don't know this. This is what you have to find. But do you know this? Yeah. How much Five. is it? In case of the positive bag, like the white uh, bag, eight. that's what you need to find, right? It is rupees eight per bag. So the so, so the bag will be three thousand. It will be three thousand bags. Pakka. See if you have three thousand bag, and you are multiplying that with eight. What is three thousand multiplied with eight? Twenty four thousand. But how how much are you supposed to get? Thirty two thousand. Thirty two thousand. So how will you find that out? You will say, let's say this is equal to a question mark. This should give you thirty two thousand. How will you find out what the question mark is? Eight divided by three, thirty-two thousand. अच्छा, Hiba, tell me this. Thirty-two thousand divided by eight. Yes, you're right. But let me just let me just uh, come to what you said right before this. You said eight divided by thirty-two thousand. So, uh, Hiba, I just want to clear this for you. We all we many a times we have this confusion. Should I divide this by that or that by this? We we have this confusion. So what we need to do is we need to say, well, I want to leave my question mark on the left hand side. I want to leave it alone. So my this eight somehow this has to go from here. How will I make it go from here? Because it is multiplied. So I need to get it divided. So I need to divide the whole thing by eight. I need to divide the whole thing by eight, 
so that my this eight and eight they will get cancelled and then it will be my question mark multiplied by one and that will give you question mark right anything multiplied by one it is self right yeah. yeah so on the left hand side you'll be left with this and on the right hand side you'll be left with thirty two thousand divided by eight now tell me how much is that Hmm? But it is a big number, so how can I? How will we divide? Very good. See, when we have big numbers, there's one more way of uh, dividing. I don't know if you're aware of this. What you can do is, you you say eight. You just multiply it mentally, okay? You say eight. Fours are thirty-two, right? Yeah. How many zeros are left? A three. Three zeros. So one, two, three. Got it? Yeah. Yeah. Eight multiplied by four thousand. Yes. So how many bags should I sell of white thousand. cement? Yes, four thousand. Did you understand the question now? Did you understand the whole process? Yeah. Okay, good. <clears throat> Anything else? Um, no. Okay, no more doubts in this worksheet. Okay. <clears throat> So, um, no more doubts, Hiba. No. All right. So, um, Hiba, what you need to do is you need to um, work on the questions that you have left in this worksheet, if any, and you have to complete this worksheet as well as the third worksheet, and you have to um, send me your answers, okay? And I will check them and I'll let you know. Um, if there any if there's any corrections, then we will address them in the next class. If there are no corrections, then that's well and good. Um, okay. So now, are you are you ready to move on to uh, the chapter fractions yeah. and decimals? I mean, we've already we've already done plenty of it. Uh, yeah. We've done some of it. So let's move on. Let me just see where I. Acha Hiba, once more, I I totally lost uh, the image where I had the place where I had written your syllabus. So can you tell me your syllabus once again? I will take note of it. Yeah, chapter one. Okay, chapter one. Chapter one full is coming, right? Yeah. Chapter two also full. Yeah. Chapter three, there was like a few chapter exercises three. are not coming. No, chapter three exercise three point one and three point two are already covered. Okay. Just one minute. And fifteen full. Yeah. Very good. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's move to the chapter called fractions and decimals. Uh, you are muted. I, I don't know how I got muted. Yeah. So let's solve a few questions on the uh, on whatever we've seen till now. Is that okay? Yeah. Hmm. Mm, okay. Okay. 
so hiba i have this question for you uh all right so there was there was a cake eating competition okay there was a cake eating competition in that uh, hiba got hiba got um, a cake and i also got a cake and they are both of equal sizes actually they are the same the same cake just in two different places okay they are two different cakes but like the same size but the thing is hiba's cake uh, has 15 portions okay not 15 that's too much hiba's cake has seven portions okay it is divided into seven parts and my cake is divided into five parts okay and um, the thing is hiba completed hiba completed six portions out of there was a particular time limit and you're supposed to you're supposed to finish in that time so hiba completed 6 by 7 of her cake and i completed the five parts right so let's say i completed 3 by 5 of my cake um can you tell me who completed more i can see more how do you know that because uh, you only ate three parts out of five hmm uh, like you didn't eat two of the parts and i hmm. i only didn't eat one of the parts okay uh huh i see all right let me change the numbers a little bit Hiba ate four parts, and I also okay, not not that. Yeah, oh, fine. I also ate Hiba ate four parts out of seven. I I ate four parts out of my five parts of my cake. Who ate more? Hmm. You ate more. How? No, we both. No, we both ate equal. we both ate equal yeah hmm hiba what do you know about equivalent fractions do you know equivalent fractions yeah, yeah? what are equivalent fractions okay for example If I ask you, tell me the equivalent fractions of four by five. Hmm. Yes. I can't hear you. Ah. Uh I didn't understand. Okay, Hiba, uh, do you remember studying about equivalent fractions? Yeah. Yes, you do. If I ask you, write three equivalent fractions of four by five. How will you do that? Hmm. Do you remember? Uh, one by five, two by five, and three by five. Hmm. Are are those equivalent fractions or like fractions? Hmm. Like fractions. Hmm. Those are those are like fractions, right? like fractions basically means that you have something like um 1 by um, sorry 1 by 7 2 by 
थ्री बाई सेवन सो बेसिकली वेन द डिनोमिनेटर इज द सेम दीज आर कॉल्ड लाइक फ्रैक्शन okay because they are alike in the sense that you can easily add them you can easily add them you can easily compare them right like when you are saying that okay hiba's cake also has seven portions my cake also has seven portions or let's not say seven let's say um just a minute let's say this is hiba's cake and then this is my cake okay and both of them have four portions i think not four four is very cliche they have six portions Okay, both of our cakes have six portions each. And now I'm asking you, <coughs> I'm telling you that um, Hiba ate, let's say, Hiba ate four by six, and I ate three by six. Hiba ate four by six, and I ate three by six. Now you can easily compare and tell me who ate more. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me who ate more. Uh, I did. Yeah, you did. Let me just quickly color this in. Uh, one minute. Okay, and in this case, it is this much. so you can easily compare saying that 4 is greater than 3 so 4 by 6 is greater than 3 by 6 acha can you also look at my cake and tell me does this also resemble another fraction that you have somewhere seen wait let me just make it like this acha tell me one thing heba If I write three by six, and if I write this over here, let's say I write over here one by two. This is one by two and three by six. Which of these is bigger? Three by six. Three by six is bigger, pakka. Yeah. And why is it bigger? But the denominator is bigger. Okay, so see here. Ah, uh, I'm just gonna erase this and this for the time being. Now, Hiba, tell me. One two is bigger. Huh? One by two is bigger. Acha. Okay, Hiba. So in this circle, I am going to color. One by two part of it. Okay. Tell me if I'm doing something wrong. Is this is this one by two? Is this one? Uh, is this one half? Yeah. It's half. This is one by two. This is three by six. Uh. Can you tell me one by two is bigger? One by two is bigger than three by six. Now again, look at this and look at this. Do they both look? Can you compare them? Look carefully. They both are equal. They both are equal. Exactly. How are they both equal? Because When we say three by six, it is the same thing as saying one by two. Why? One by two. Because when you, because when you, ha, huh, tell me. Ah, uh, because ah, uh, like ah, uh, even after eating three ah uh, slices, we still have three left. 
So we ate the equal amount. Yes. Three by six means you ate half of the cake. Right? Yeah. When I'm saying that I ate three pieces out of six, that means I actually ate half of the whole thing. Right? So that is why they are both the same. And in fact, three by six and one by two, they are called equivalent fractions. Why equivalent fractions? Valent, see, equivalent fractions. Equi means equal. Equal. Valent means value. Okay. Equal okay. value. Okay. So these two fractions may have the equal value. As you can see, as you can see over here and over here from both these circles that the value is the same. Right. So the thing yeah. is, when you have three by six and you will do this cancelling procedure, that's called cancel. So you have three, you <clears throat> read the table of three, you say three ones are three. So you wrote a three over here. Then you say the same three, I'm going to read the table of three only because I'm like cancelling with respect to three. So three ones are three and three, how many times are six? Two. Twos are six. So are you seeing it? I got one by two. Yeah. Yeah. So again, tell me uh, if these two are equal or not. Uh, 80, no. 72 by 81 and 8 by 9. They are not equal. They are not equal? Yeah. How? Because in 8 by 9, for, like, mm -hmm. for example, uh, in 8 by 9, there's only like one thing, one number missing. Acha. In seventy two by eighty one, there's um eight number missing. Okay. Heba, again, again, remember this. Uh, so the concept that you're using is, you are saying how many how many parts are missing? If something is missing more number of parts, then that will be a smaller fraction, right? That's what you're saying. But, but look at it over here. Here you have three parts missing. Here you have only one part missing, but they are both equal. Right? Yeah. So does it matter? Uh, are we talking about the number of parts missing? Should we talk about the number of parts missing? Or should we talk about how many total parts are there first to begin with? How many total parts are there? First yeah. Yeah. Because if we don't talk about that, then we don't know how many parts in total are we talking about. Because over here in the pink circle, as you can see, there were a total of six parts. Out of those, three parts are missing. And in the black circle, there are a total of two parts and only one part is missing. So if you just take, if you say, okay, only one part is missing in the black circle, in the pink circle, there are three parts missing. So that means the black circle, it's a, it's a bigger fraction. So that will be the, a wrong way of thinking about it, isn't it? Yeah. Right? As you can clearly see over here, they are both equal. So what we need to look at is how many parts are we beginning with in the first place? So let me just give you one more example. If you say 8 by 9, if I say 8, 8 by 9 multiplied by 10 and you, I'm multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by 10. Can I do that or is it am I doing something wrong by doing that? No. Sorry? No, you're not doing anything wrong. It's, it's perfectly fine. I can do that? Yeah. Yeah, I can do that because 
multiplying by 10 and again dividing by 10 it's the same thing like 10 and 10 gets cancelled so it's not changing anything in the value okay the value is going to be the same so okay what is 8 multiplied by 10 80 and denominator becomes 90. 90 let me just check the time okay um Hiba, let's take a five minutes break because i think we've been studying for a long time you also must have been tired just take a five minutes break and then we'll continue for another 20 minutes okay okay if you want you can go around drink water go to the washroom walk around anything just like spend five minutes away from the screen okay, okay. so i will see you exactly in five minutes okay okay see ya yeah so again simplest form means uh the form where like over here it's this simplest form the form where the <clears throat> the fraction cannot further be broken down to its simplest form okay so this is the simplest form it cannot further be divided right eight by nine you can't further cancel it but over here you can cancel so can you tell me um how can you cancel it can you cancel it by three? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So how we do it is we say this is 72. I'm going to say I'm going to read the table of three. Three, start reading three and tell me where to stop. Reading the table of three and tell me where to stop. Hmm. Three ones are three. Three twos are six. Three threes are nine. Nine. Right. 15. So, yeah. So it's this seven. The first number is seven. So basically, it's the same thing as what we do over here. You know, three twos are six. We, we do it like this, right? Yeah. We're doing the same thing over here. So three, and I'm going to cut this. I'm going to make a cross across it. And then I'm going to say three twos are six. Because then three threes are nine becomes a bigger number than seven. I'm just going to take a look at seven for now because that's how we it's the same thing as doing it over here right we just take a look at seven first so uh three twos are six and then what is seven minus six how much is remaining i said three twos are six so six you take six in your mind and you say well the number i have in front of me is seven and then what is seven minus six? One. One. so i'm gonna write a tiny one over here I'm going to write a one over here. So this, this number, it becomes 12. Okay. This number becomes 12. Now you have to read the table of three until you get 12. Four. Four. So <clears throat> I'm sorry, three fours are 12. So you will cancel this by three and this turns out to be 24. Okay. Three multiplied by 24 will give you 72. Now read the table of three and tell me, how will you do this, 81? Six three and the, yes. Three twos are six. I'm going to write two. Six in my mind. So three twos are six. But we have to stop at like eight. So I had to get eight. I had to reach eight. But I reached six. So how many, how many units are remaining? How much is remaining? Two. two. Two is remaining. So I'm going to write two over here. And so 21. Read the table of three till you get 21. Seven. Three sevens are 21. Very good. So it's tw now this, my fraction, it has become 24 by 27. Now can you further reduce it by reading the table of three? Yeah. Hmm. Go ahead. Eight by eight by nine. Yes, eight by nine. So my fraction has finally reduced to eight by nine. So can you they are both equal now? Seventy two by eighty one. Yeah. Is it equal to eight by nine? Yeah. Hmm? Okay. Is seventy two by eighty one equal to 24 by 27? Hint is in the lower half of the screen. 
can you repeat the question again is 72 by 81 equal to 24 by 27 yeah yes because we reduced it and it came up to be this okay now uh my question to you i'm going <coughs> to i'm going to uh, give this to you as homework because we're running out of time so okay wait let me just um can you go back to the previous which one this yeah if uh, 72 by 81 is going to be 24 by 27 Hmm. So twenty four by twenty seven is going to be eight by one, eight by nine. Yes, they are all equal to each other. So we can also write twenty four by twenty seven instead of seventy two by eighty one. Yes. Okay. <coughs> It's going to be the same thing. Um. Okay. Tell me which one is bigger, one by two or two by four. But they are both equivalent. Very good. Now tell me which one is bigger, one by two or one by four? One by two. Very good. One by two. Why? Because it is uh like the half of it. Yes, that's half, and this is one fourth, right? Okay. So this yeah. is one thing. Uh. See, there are three rules. If you want to, if you want to compare fractions, if you want to compare fractions, there are three rules. Number one, if if your fractions are like fractions, what does that mean? That means if your denominator is the same. For example, one by five. Okay, not one by five. Let me just take something. Can big. you write a little? Can you write it a little down? Yeah. Okay. um wait oh no okay wait now it's fine yeah like 12 by 40 37 by 40 and um 28 by 40 can you arrange them in ascending order <clears throat> yeah Yes. Go ahead. Ascending means smaller to bigger. सबसे पहले छोटा आएगा. You will give the uh, you will write the smallest number first, and then you will move on to the bigger one. Yeah. Twelve twelve hmm. by forty twenty eight and then thirty seven. Very good. Okay. So that's the rule with like fractions that you just have to compare the numerators you just have to compare the numerators now the second rule is with unlike fractions matlab the denominator are different but numerator is same it's the same okay like we saw in 1 by 2 and 1 by 4 so in this case what you do can you tell me Okay, let me give you one more example. One by two, one by four, and let's say one by ten. Now, can you tell me which one is bigger out of these two? One by four. Very good. See, you're smart, mashallah. So you're saying that one by two is bigger than one by four. One by four is bigger than one by ten. Do you see a pattern? Yeah. What is the pattern? Uh, like the left side is. See the pattern over here is that if the numerator is the same, only in that case this applies. If the numerator is the same, which it is over here, then we will see. We will look at the denominator. The smaller the denominator, the bigger the, bigger. the value of the fraction. Oh yeah, I understood now. Understood that. Okay, yeah. like one by two, one by four, one by ten. We will take a look at the. We will look at the denominator. Yeah, and uh, 
one sec. If the denominator is small, then the the fraction is bigger. Yes, exactly. Okay, so I'm gonna write it like this. Wait a minute. One by ten is smaller than one by four is smaller than one by two. Okay. Now the third thing, the third rule. is when neither the numerator nor the denominator are different are same okay unlike fractions <clears throat> where both numerator is also different okay and the denominator is also different okay so in this case what you do for example i have uh, we had that Six by seven and four by five. Over here, my numerator and denominator both are different. There is nothing common over here. So in this case, what I do? Can you tell me what to do here? What can we do? Hmm. Guess. 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 We have to check the numerator. So the denominator. Okay. Let me give you a hint. In this case, since the denominator and numerator both are different, we need to make, we need to put them on a level playing ground, on a level field. Yeah. We, we have to find to... the LCM. Nope. See, that is that that you are right. We have we have to do the LCM. But what are we doing? Why are we finding the LCM? Because we have to make the denominator same. Exactly, we have to make the denominator same. Why? So that we can make it in this form. We can change it to this form, and then we can easily compare. It will become easy for us to compare, right? That's why we make the denominator the same. Acha, how will we make the denominator the same? Can you tell me? In this case, to find this LCM of seven and five. Hmm. so what we'll do is that we'll say okay i have to find their equivalent fractions and i have to keep on finding the equivalent fractions to the point where the the denominator becomes the same so if i don't know the proper method what i'll do is i will keep on saying okay 60 by 70 you know 40 by 50 but the denominator is still not the same so i will say well what should i do what what number can i get what number can i get that comes in the table of 7 also and that comes in the table of 5 also can you tell me i'm sorry i was going to write the answer what table comes in what number comes in the table of 7 also and 5 also hmm 30 35 yeah 35 right Seven ones are seven, twos are fourteen, threes are twenty, uh, ones fours are twenty-eight, then fives are thirty-five, and similarly five sevens are thirty-five. So that is why we take the LCM. Okay. So you can take the LCM, or what you can do is you can just multiply seven and five. You can do that also. Okay. Okay. So seven fives are thirty-five. So. Seven multiplied by five is thirty-five. So I have to multiply the numerator also with that much only. Okay. So six fives are thirty. Thirty. So my six by seven became thirty by thirty-five. Now what will my four by five become? I have to multiply five with how much to get thirty-five? A seven. Seven. So numerator also have to multiply with seven. So what will the numerator become? A twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. So one fraction is thirty by thirty-five. The other fraction is twenty-eight by thirty-five. Now tell me which one is bigger? Thirty by thirty-five. Yes, thirty by thirty-five. This one is bigger. Okay. Um, Hiba, please, please note. Uh, please take a screenshot of the screen. I do. Okay. <clears throat> Now, uh, please note. or maybe i think the time is like too much so what i'm going to do is i'm going to give you the questions on whatsapp okay i think you must be really tired so you can take rest study for your um, english test and i will give you the questions 
for fractions uh and also heba i just wanted to know see uh, on monday i will be traveling during the time of our class so i won't be able to take class uh so is it will it be okay if i give you a pre recorded lesson like i'll give yeah. you a recording you watch it and then if you have any doubts then we'll get it clarified is that okay yeah and also on monday uh, i have to prepare for the science test science test is on tuesday okay yeah <laughs> okay so um maybe i think it would be better if we don't have any any class on monday at all because if you have to prepare for your science test then that means you won't be able to give time to watch the recording even so um hiba now our next class is going to be on tuesday okay so on tuesday and wednesday we have two classes okay yeah. on tuesday we have one class and on wednesday we have one class okay yeah uh, also like hmm. we don't have any class on sunday right no we don't i again i i will be traveling so i won't be able to take class yeah. otherwise i will so like on sunday and monday i will be like sorry i will be busy preparing for the science test on monday and yeah. sunday right okay so you do your best in for your science exam okay all the best and uh, i'll give you a few questions just keep practicing math simultaneously don't forget math while you're preparing for science okay